Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Actual Tech Media. We are here at VMworld where I'm joined by Aaron Farrigan, who is the EVP for Asigra. Aaron, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So tell us about Asigra. How long have you been around? What do you do? Asigra is a software company. It's based in Toronto, Canada. It's been around 32 years, so it started in 1986, yeah. And we've always done, we've always been in backup since inception. We sell our product all over the world, uh, all six continents where business gets done and we sell it through channel only, so we work with partners and um, globally. And it's a data protection platform, really, and, and I know that's a big word, and there's lots of different facets to that, but um, it started out way back in the day, moving backups from site one to site two as an off-site copy, um, and then all that throughout you know, the multiple decades is it morphed into a cloud backup, I think is kind of the name these days people refer to it, whether it's a private cloud, hybrid, public cloud, and so on. Yeah, so you know, some of the different things that people you know, that work with us or why people work with us and so on is uh, technically, uh, it's agentless backup. We were the first company that started doing agentless backup, so you don't need to install an agent like you would historically on every target machine that you wanted to back up which was kind of neat, people didn't, hadn't seen that before. How do you back up a thing without installing an agent on it? We showed them how to do that. Uh, we're not hacking into it, we're using credentials and so on. And, right. You know, grabbing it, application level, OS level, at the, at the storage level, different levels. Um, it's multi-tenanted, so a lot of our partners use it to deliver a cloud backup service, or some mid-market or enterprise shops use it to deliver an internal service. They're, they see themselves these days kind of as an internal service provider. So, so what are people buying? Are they buying a license to a, something in the cloud? Are they buying something to put on premises? Are they buying which, whatever they want? Well, it's software, so they can either run it internally in their own private cloud. So okay. they would buy our software, they already have infrastructure, um, or they can install it and run it in you know, their cloud provider of choice if they've teamed up with someone like AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or some others right. throughout the years you know, as those develop. Um, or they can do a hybrid. Some of the data sits on their site, some of it sits off-site either at a service provider or in a third-party you know, uh, hyper cloud or however these guys You can fully it. support that hybrid cloud scenario for them. Yes, all different, three different deployment styles. What can you back up? Physical, virtual, all of the above? Uh, all of the above and then some. So we started out, and the world did, in the physical world. And then as the world became more virtual, right, through the decades, so we moved into being able to back up everything virtually. Um, but now the world has gone into this, you know, SaaS applications and hyper cloud environments. So people have some physical, some virtual, on site or off site. And then they have stuff that's sitting in these hyper clouds as well as some applications that are SaaS. So we do all of them. Um, Office 365, Salesforce.com, G Suite, that kind of stuff. Or into the cloud, wherever they want or to go. Or into the cloud or locally, it's up to them. They're the custodian of you know, their data. They decide if it's a service provider of their choice that they you know, want to work with, and we work with global service providers that can deliver services globally, locally, regionally, uh, different strokes for different folks. How do you license the product? It's a, it's a good question. So over the years, backup licensing has evolved over time. We, and we've kind of uh, led some of that. We were the first company that did backup licensing based on capacity, because before 1986, it was all based on per agent, you know, right. in the old days. Agentless can't do that, is it? Agentless can't charge that way, so we started just, we said, okay, we'll license it based on how much data you've got. People said, oh, they might not be around long enough because there's not a lot of data. They were wrong, and so, but then that evolved into people having a ton of data. So now we license, to answer your question, either on CPU socket or per machine, physical or virtual, or per capacity, per mailbox. So however, whichever metric is cheapest for the customer, that's how you do it. That's how we license it. And we can even change the metric over time if their environment. Can they mix and match or if they're doing something with Office 365, they can do it by mailbox. Okay. They can do so for, for virtual environments, you can either do it virtual, you can do per CPU socket, per virtual machine, or per capacity. Very cool. And as your VM environment changes, you might decide that the different metric now works in your favor. You have lots of little machines, so you do capacity. Capacity. You know, lots of big machines, you do, you know, number of machines or right. CPU socket or whatever is cheapest for you. Very good. Yeah. So what kind of what are you doing at VMworld this year? At this year we are showing uh, our latest version 14 that we announced uh, recently. And what we're doing there is another new development in the world of backup recovery is 
It's now actually a, an attack vector. So the bad guy's ransomware is attacking backup software, has right. done for the last little while. And um, you know that journey is really taken to three to one, three copies of the data, two different types of media, one off-site. And the bad actors have now circumvented that. And the way they're doing it is with what's called attack loops. Attack loops, malware landing on the network, sits dormant for three to six months. Right. During that three to six month dormant period, it gets into the backup stream and it sits in the backup repositories. And then it detonates and then says, give me the money. And then you say, no, I got a backup. And then you go and you recover, and by recovering, you're re-injecting it with a syringe right back into your environment. Right. It's very hard to get rid of because you don't know what day you actually got the virus into your backup repository. Right. So you keep recovering, and you keep recovering, and over and over again. So what we did is we introduced multiple malware detection engines in the backup stream and in the recovery stream to break the attack loops, two-factor authentication. So when deletions have backup uh, data deletions happen, uh, you have to authenticate. Right. And uh, um, changing the directory, the repository name, so that the bad guys have a moving target. Because the different attacks, a bunch of different backup vendors got attacked, famous uh, vendors, you know, orange brands, green brands, red brands, lots of different brands. Right. Um, and their customers lost data because the bad guys are attacking backup software specifically. What they're trying to do is if you can't recover, got to pay the ransom. Right. So that's what we're showing here. So with that, with that capability, I assume that you have some kind of fingerprinting with all these malware engines, and you're able to look at if there's a new attack that's detected, but you've, you know that, you, can you detect that that was put into the backup stream six months ago? Uh, is it real yes, time yes. or does it go back to historical as well? No, 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 it's real time. So as data, it's in the backup stream. So as data is getting backed up, right. and it's not just signature based, there's multiple engines right. in there, right? Um, so as the backups happen, before it lands in the repository, we're reading the file in a way that doesn't affect the performance, because right. you have to do it in a careful way that otherwise your backups will take forever, because you have to read every file. So we're doing it in a very clever way, these technologies that exist out there. And then, if you've already backed up unwittingly some malware That's that landed asking, on your yeah. network and it's sitting in your repository, and now for whatever reason you now need to recover it, you will on also, the way in. also catch it. Got so it. on the way in and on the way out, Got meaning it. the recovery is on the way out. Very good. So that's what we're doing at VMworld. Aaron, thank you very much. This was a great conversation. Fun. Scott, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. And thank you to our audience for watching this video.